Hi, my name is Julian, and I'm a dev advocate focusing on AI and machine learning. In this session, we're going to discuss two significant problems for machine learning projects, bias and explainability. Before we jump into the demo, let me explain what those issues are. Bias in general is an unfair representation of reality. And as we use data sets for machine learning in order to build models, there's always a risk that the data sets that we use do not fully and fairly represent the reality that we're trying to model. Unfortunately, these problems uh, are often related with sensitive attributes like uh, age, sex, um, uh, cities, you know, where you live, etc., etc. And as you have all those different groups in your data set, it's possible that one or potentially several groups are underrepresented, giving the algorithm fewer uh, instances to learn from. And eventually, this could lead to a model that predicts very well and very positively for a certain group of data instances, and not so accurately and not so favorably for another group of instances. And this would be considered bias. Okay, and there are many, many angles to this problem. Um, but this is uh, the kind of problem we're going to look at today. The second issue with machine learning is explainability. And as models get more and more complex, and yes, I'm looking at you, deep learning, it's becoming almost impossible to understand exactly why a model comes up with a certain prediction. And you could say, well, it doesn't really matter, you know, if I use the test set and I have a high accuracy uh, result, then fine, you know, I, I don't need to know what's, uh, what's the reason behind this prediction. I just need to know it's the right one. And, you know, fair enough, of course, accuracy and testing is important. But increasingly, organizations and companies want to understand what's happening inside the model. And they particularly want to understand why a model comes up with a certain outcome for a certain instance, it, which features were important and maybe down to the feature value, you know, which feature values contribute more to a positive outcome and, and more to a negative outcome, let's say. Think about hiring, you know, credit decisions, uh, health applications, all these are critical and we really, really need to understand what's going on, right? And uh, of course, increasingly, those organizations uh, and companies have uh, a regulatory and, uh, and legal obligations to explain how their models work. Okay, so that's why explainability is such, a, such an important thing. Okay, so to highlight those two problems and how to solve them, uh, we're going to jump to the demo now. So what are we going to do here? We're going to start from, uh, from a data set. Uh, it's called the adult data set. It's uh, um, extracted from uh, US uh, census data. And this particular data set has, as you would guess, a number of uh, uh, you know, demographics, uh, yeah, information, et cetera, et cetera. And it's labeled with whether um, a certain individual earns more than $50,000 per year. Okay, so this is the data set we're going to use, and we're going to train a binary classification model using the XGBoost algorithm to try and predict if a certain citizen makes more or, or less than 50K a year. Okay, so that's the problem, uh, business problem, so to speak, we want to solve, but uh, we're not so interested in, in solving the problem. We're more here uh, interested in, is there a bias in the data set? Is there a bias in the model? And can we understand uh, how the model predicts? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. And we're going to do this with a new SageMaker capability called SageMaker Clarify. Uh, so I'll share the URL to this notebook uh, on the on the final slide. So don't worry, you're going to be able to reproduce this very easily. Okay. All right. So the first step, as always, is to download the data set, which is already split for training and validation. So we grab those two files. 
then we load them using pandas and we assign uh, column names to the to the two data sets okay and this is what it looks like so we see the age uh, the the work class education uh, marital status ethnic group well that's definitely a sensitive attribute so we could run an analysis on this one sex which is often another sensitive attribute uh, and then you know capital gain capital loss so did this person uh, become more wealthy or less wealthy recently uh, the country where they live and the label right so are they making more or less than 50k dollars a year okay so that's the data set all right so of course early on you would want to get a sense of what that data looks like so you would run all kinds of visualizations of course in the interest of of time here i'm kind of zooming directly to uh, uh, a potential problem but you would need to look at different angles uh, like i said you know uh, country ethnic group uh, and maybe a few more uh, because those are known to be areas where you could have you know a small group of instances and maybe potential bias here so zooming in on uh, on sex we can count how many men and women we have in the data set and we see we have you know it's about one third female and two thirds male so it's imbalance uh it's it's very mild imbalance um you know it wouldn't be considered a a, a big problem at this point but you could say well you know starting from this we can already see we have uh, fewer female instances if you allow me to call them like that and uh we could zoom in a little bit more and we could say okay so actually if now we look at the at the labels um what do we see so we if we count uh, men and women making more than 50k which is the positive outcome for this uh, model we're building we can see the imbalance is actually more severe and it's more like six to one seven to one so you could say well now the algo is going to get you know six to seven times fewer female 50k instances and again i apologize for calling them like that but it's a, it's just a shortcut i know these are people uh, then it's going to get uh, male 50k instances. So it's probably going to be more difficult to pick up the right patterns. And, uh, and the model could be biased towards that majority class and, uh, and potentially predict more favorably for male in general than for female, simply because it has uh, less data to learn from. Okay, so let's focus on our, our analysis on this. But again, this would just be one of the analyses that I would want to run here. I'd certainly want to look at other things too. Okay, so we're going to encode data uh, to get rid of all those nasty strings in the data set, just replace everything with integers. Um, this isn't the feature engineering session, so we're not going to spend too much time here using the label encoder in scikit-learn. Uh, so encoding the training and the testing set and saving them to CSV files. Okay. The important thing to remember is that the female sex value has been encoded as a zero and male as one. We need to remember those values because we'll need them to configure the bias analysis. Okay. So now this is what the data set looks like. No more strings, just integers. Okay. And the rest is, uh, is business as usual. Uh, just upload the two training and test sets to S3, configure the estimator uh, with the XJBoost algo, set some hyperparameters, and the really important one, of course, is binary logistic, because we want to run a, um, a, a binary classification problem. Um, you could ignore the other ones, you could set, uh, you could leave default values. Um, I also added early stopping to avoid overfitting and then we train okay and as usual SageMaker fires up the instance copies the data set uh, pulls the docker container and starts training okay and so we start training and we have about 30k um, training instances and about 15k validation instances okay and it trains for 
51 uh, rounds, 73 seconds. The model is saved. And uh, I need to make sure that I create the model, which really means I register it to SageMaker because I'm going to need it during my bias analysis uh, for uh, post-training metrics. Okay, so as you see here, it's not needed to deploy uh, the model. You can just train and have a model registered and it's enough for uh, SageMaker Clarify. We'll see that it actually deploys uh, the models uh, automatically to a temporary endpoint. So you don't need to do this yourself, right? Just if you have a model laying around, that's good enough. No need for an endpoint. Okay. Um, then we can start uh, running the bias analysis. And this is super easy to do. It's actually based on SageMaker processing, which is another capability in SageMaker that makes it very easy to run all sorts of uh, batch jobs like uh, maybe data processing and model evaluation and, and in this case uh, bias analysis so the only thing i need to do is grab this uh, clarify processor object set infrastructure requirements and then configure my analysis so here i want to run the bias analysis both on the data set which we call pre-training analysis and on the model which we call post-training analysis. Or you could do one or the other, but let's do everything. So as you would expect, I need to define the location of the data set, uh, the name of the label in that data set, and the list of uh, column names, and the fact that it's a CSV data set. Okay, simple enough. And as far as the model is concerned for the post-training uh, metrics, I just need to give the model name, so the one we just trained, and the infrastructure requirements, and the fact that it accepts CSV data. Okay, again, simple. No problem. Uh, the really interesting bit is this, where we actually say, uh, okay, this is the, this is the, the bias uh, angle we want to, we want to zoom in. Uh, so here, as mentioned above, we're going to focus our analysis on sex, right? Men versus women. So that's called a facet, okay? And it's the name of the column. We need to pass the, the value, the feature value for the potentially biased group, okay? So in this case, women. And remember, this feature value was encoded as a zero, okay? So this defines the... Um, let's say the minority group or the underrepresented group uh, as all data instances where sex is equal to zero, right? Which is women. And we need to pass the value for the positive label. So the positive outcome for this model is um, getting a prediction of one, meaning you make more than 50K per year, okay? So that's the, uh, that's the value that we pass here. So now we're ready to run the job, passing uh, all those uh, config objects. So the data config, the bias config, the model config, and the list of metrics that we want to compute. Okay, and here we're computing everything, right? Because why not? So then the, the processing job runs, okay? And uh, we can see uh, it's calculating the post-training bias metrics. We can see it's actually deploying uh, this uh, temporary endpoint, right? And it's taking it down afterwards. So you don't have to worry about this. Uh, it's not staying around. And uh, it's computing as the pre-training metrics as well. Okay. And then it's generating a report, which we're going to look at in a second. And of course, it's also outputting a whole bunch of JSON uh, metrics and uh, do you want to look at this mm -mm. you don't want to read JSON so let's scroll down to the end and we see the pre-training and the post-training what you want to do is go to this right uh, experiments find your uh, bias analysis job here's mine open this and op go to bias report and now you get a, a human friendly view of those metrics Okay, and you can see a table or you can see a chart. So let's look at a few. Um, class imbalance, so we actually visualized that. We saw there was class imbalance. So zero would mean 
perfect balance. Uh, here, this says, well, the, the majority, there is a majority class and a minority class, right? So 0.45 is not huge in balance, but it's, it's there, okay? Um, let's look at DPL. So, oh yeah, and if you click on any of those, of course, you get additional information on what those are and examples. So very valuable. Uh, let's look at the DPL. So DPL detects if one class has a significantly higher proportion of desirable outcomes in the training data. So in, in our context, this means, um, so we have a majority class, now we know that. So uh, does this majority class has, have a higher proportion of 50K labels? And we kind of know the answer already because we saw that uh, matplotlib graph early on, but this metrics confirms it, right? Again, zero would mean no difference and we see here a positive value saying the majority class is actually has actually a higher proportion of desirable outcomes. So in other words, we have more men labeled with the 50K label than we have women labeled with the 50K label. So that's potentially a problem because it could actually, like I said, bias the algo into uh, predicting more positively for uh, men than women. So we have more metrics. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'll, I'll show you how to learn more about those in a minute. Let's look maybe at one of the post-training metrics, disparate impact. So this metric examines whether the model predicts outcome differently for each class. Okay, And we can see, again, we have a non-zero value. So we may have a problem here. So this means that... Um, this model tends to predict more favorably for the majority class than for the minority class. So in other words, it will predict more uh, 50K labels for men uh, than it will predict uh, 50K labels for women. And that's not so good, right? Um, so the problem that we have here is what we feared, the fact that we have way more um, male 50k instances than female 50k instances is actually introducing bias in the model, which you know tends to predict more favorably uh, on the, on the male instances than on the female instances. So this probably would need to be fixed, right? And uh, there are a number of techniques for that. Okay, so you can uh, go and look at all those. Uh, so how do you learn more about these? Uh, there's, if you click on, I guess, any of them, and you're gonna get links to a uh, to white papers. Uh, and I think I opened it. Yeah, okay. Uh, so this is called Fairness Measures for Machine Learning and Finance, so, because it's using a finance data set as, a, as an illustration, but uh, this is definitely um, applicable to uh, uh, to any problem, uh, so it's a it's a very good read, and um, it has uh, lots of information on the bias metrics, and it has the actual formulas if you're interested. So if you want to know exactly what those metrics are and how they're computed, well, you can learn everything about them here, <laughs> right? Uh, it's uh, it's a really good one here. If you'd rather read code than a, a, a white paper, you can also go to this uh, repository, which is called Amazon SageMaker Clarify. And this is actually um, an open source package that uh, contains the actual code that computes the metrics, okay? So you can see uh, exactly how those are computed uh, in the actual code that's doing that, okay? so. If uh, another another good way to understand what those metrics are. Okay, so we've run our analysis and um, we also get uh, reports um, in S3, which we can copy locally and which I already did. And we get an HTML report and we get a Python report and we get a PDF report. Okay, so you don't have to go and build those yourself. They're already there. Okay, so as you can see, it's it's pretty easy to uh, it's pretty easy to run those uh, those bias analysis. You need to know what facet you're interested in and um, and you know what what to look for and uh, and then clarify makes it simple to compute everything. Okay, let's move on to model explainability. Here we're going to use the same model that we just trained. 
and we're going to use Sage Maker Clarify again to understand which features contribute most to the predicted outcome. And we're also going to try to explain each individual prediction in the training set. SageMaker Clarify uses a library called SHAP, which means Shapley Additive Explanation. So if you've never heard about this, um, this is a popular tool for model explainability. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have time to go into a lot of detail here. So I highly recommend that you go and, and read the uh, excellent documentation and examples in the SHAP repository. But this is what um, SageMaker Clarify uses here. So how does this work? So first of all, we need to define uh, a SHAP config, uh, which really means we need to provide a baseline. So the way SHAP works is that it will um, build a baseline and compare individual predictions uh, with respect to that baseline. So there are a number of ways to do this. Again, can't go into details. I'm just using uh, I'm just using existing uh, instances from the testing set to build a baseline. Okay, uh, just averaging um, uh, features from that data set. Okay, I need to pass an S3 location, and then I can configure uh, the uh, again the data config for Clarify. So where is the data set, uh, where to store results, what the label is, the names of the columns and the data set type. Okay. So again, start from the, start from that same data set we use, uh, previously and, uh, and compute sharp values for that. And then running the job is just as simple as, uh, running this, passing the data config and the model config and the explainability config. Okay, so this fires up another SageMaker processing job um, that's going to compute, as you can see here, it's going to compute uh, sharp values for uh, the 30K something samples in, um, in the data set. And it's going to uh, output a report that we can fetch and we can also visualize results in SageMaker Studio. Okay, so again, JSON stuff that we don't want to uh, see here. We'd rather go here and find the, yes, the explainability job. There it is. And if you go to model insights, you will see that uh, the most important features are uh, capital gain and age and relationship and so on and so on, right? So does that make sense? So capital gain, you could say, well, if somebody's reporting capital gains, they're doing well. So yeah, it's quite likely they're uh, they're earning more money than the others, right? Age uh, is yeah probably meaningful in the sense that you know as you get older, you know you you move up uh, in your company and you know you get a you get a better salary. So age is probably a good indicator. Uh, as you get older, you make more money and eventually you end up over that uh, 50k threshold. Um, the other ones, you know, I don't know, occupation makes sense. I guess, you know, if you have a, a, a white collar job, you're more likely to make over 50k than other groups, etc, etc. Um, so these are aggregated uh, values for the data set. And what we can also see, if we go back to the notebook, Let me scroll down here. Uh, if we fetch this uh, CSV file from S3, we actually get individual um, SHAP values for each data instance. So what this tells us is the specific age value for um, uh, the first instance in the data set has a slightly negative impact on the predicted outcome. So it's reducing the, the probability that this person makes more than 50K. Uh, on the other hand, for the second instance here, we see the age is actually more favorable, right? Uh, and so these values um, visualized in a CSV file are you know hard to, uh, hard to figure out, but you can easily 
grab those values and inject them in the shop uh, in the shop library and you can build uh, pretty cool visualizations um, such as these where you can see if uh, for each feature if a high feature value is uh, improving the or increasing the predicted outcome or whether it's decreasing it okay so uh, there are tons of of ways you can visualize this in uh, in Sharp, and uh, and you would just you would just have to load basically those uh, uh, those values into the Sharp library or or maybe your own graphs and just visualize everything. But SageMaker Clarify uh, computes those values for you, so the rest is just building your graphs that you need to uh, to understand how the model works. Okay. All right, uh, well, that's pretty much what I wanted to tell you today. Uh, there's one more thing. There's always one more thing, uh, of course. You can also um, uh, use bias detection uh, with SageMaker Model Monitor. Okay, so SageMaker Model Monitor is a, a capability that was launched uh, over a year ago in SageMaker where uh, you can track uh, data quality issues and prediction quality issues in production on your endpoints. And you can do the same with bias metrics. So you can track your bias metrics over time on your endpoints and um, and you can see if uh, drift is happening. So if those metrics tend to change uh, brutally over time, which could indicate a change in the statistical properties of the data that is sent for prediction, and which is definitely something you would uh, you would want to look for. Okay, so this is integrated, and uh, there's a, a very good notebook that you can uh, that you can run in uh, on Model Monitor to uh, to experiment with uh, uh, tr tracking bias metrics over time. Okay, that's a that's a really good one. Okay, I think it's time to wrap up. So let me uh, let me share some resources that would be useful, I think. These are the direct link to the documentation for a bias analysis, model explainability, uh, model monitor integration, and uh, the relevant APIs in SageMaker processing. Uh, these are the white papers that you uh, certainly want to read if you want to figure out what those metrics are. And uh, the SageMaker Clarify repository, where you can find that open source code for uh, metric uh, computation, and the SHAP repository, and uh, last but not least, my own repository, where you will find the notebook that we use today. Well, that's it. I hope you had a good time and enjoy the rest of the conference. Bye-bye.